everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video. I've been working on it for a while. So we are finally doing my New York City thrift and vintage shop guide. I'm going to go pretty in depth about each store, but I'm gonna go through each one. Kind of show you guys around, um, talk about like the go-tos, the size range in each store, pricing. I get a lot of questions sometimes on where I buy my clothing, where I shop, where do I recommend to shop if people are visiting in New York. So these are just my spots that are kind of like go-tos at the moment. I do want to say that I have not included any flea markets or like the Manhattan Vintage Show, like anything like that, markets, fleas, because I wanna do another one of these on flea markets and stuff. So this will definitely be like a series, especially cause I'm always finding out new shops and always shopping around. This is not like end all be all, the only shops to go to. Like obviously I don't know every store. I still have a long list of places I wanna try out. These are just the go-tos and my opinions on them. I know everybody feels differently about different stores and everybody has different styles, price ranges, etc. This is just sort of like how I feel about these stores. I've also not included any Beacons closets, Buffalo exchanges, etc. I feel like people know those. They're a bunch around the city. I wanted to do more like New York based unique stores kind of thing. So again to reiterate I'm not saying I like discovered these stores. I know most of them are very popular. If you live in New York, a New York native, you're probably like okay, these aren't anything new, but again, maybe you'll find one or two things that are new or that you haven't hit in a while or that you haven't considered. I hope at least somebody finds a little something that they want to pop into or try or a place to visit something. That's that's my goal. Here are all the stores I'm going to be talking about. If you want to screenshot this to save, beautiful. And there's stores that kind of cover, I think, a lot of bases in terms of your personal style and where you go to shop and what you want when you're shopping secondhand, vintage, thrift, etc. I'm going to do like a little ranking system, price, size, range, go to this store for blank. From each store, I'll kind of feature my favorite pieces that I've bought from there, if applicable, but obviously I have to go kind of quick because I have about like 15 stores, I think it is. Let's do it. So first up, we have Screaming Mimi's. Screaming Mimi's is located in Chelsea on 14th Street. Probably not a shock to you that I'm including this. If you have subscribed to me for a while, Screaming Mimi's is probably my favorite store in New York City purely off of just the environment the playfulness the like unique quality of each item you never know what you're gonna get and the rich history of the store personally fascinates me Screaming Mimi's is essentially an eclectic mecca of vintage costume archival creations from like every decade you can imagine every theme every era and is curated to absolute perfection. They sell secondhand clothing, vintage, archive. They sell a few contemporary pieces as well. Absolutely everything goes there. Nothing is too crazy in Screaming Mimi's, which I absolutely love. And I genuinely feel like this store has impacted my personal style and my creative boundaries and pushing those boundaries. Every time I go into that store, I absolutely love it. Shout out Anya and Danny who work there. Danny now owns it, which is so major. To talk a bit about the store and how it's organized, it's organized sort of like by decade and theme. So it's like 1970s, 1980s, 80s prom. Some of my favorites being their bridal collection, their clown collection, circus collection. I love the French court section. Um, band is also really, really cool. I always find some cool, unique pieces. And then whatever they have going on in that first round circular rack in the center of the store, that's always really good. Right now they have like holiday wear for like holiday parties, some really cool vintage pieces. So that's always fun and kind of like relevant to the time, the season and really well curated. So Screaming Mimi's has a very long history. It's been at this location in Chelsea for like five to six years. It used to be on the Upper West Side, used to be on Lafayette Street. There was a location in Japan, but the first location was open in 1978. Laura Wills was the owner. She's an incredibly connected, talented icon, honestly, has an unreal eye for curation and has worked with, you know, MTV, Nirvana, Cyndi Lauper, who actually worked at the store, which is really cool. She was a sales rep before her career took off. Now, come here, look at these. These are pretty cool. Oh, oh she no. found one. <laughs> yes, Laura got it for me. I don't know. I don't work here anymore. <laughs> hey, Crimmins are really in. Yeah. We're filming Macy's all the time. I know, but this is where they first started. Is it Over really? here? Yeah. And all the little boutiques that the vintage clothing that started with the old Crimmins and then KDK started making them. And this, this came about as we couldn't find a top that looked sexy and across between a bathing suit so we started to use these as uh, blouses and then that caught on and everybody started wearing it 
I died at her talking about crinolines being popular and up and coming and how stores like Screamy Mimi's and boutiques have kind of made them popular because like personally right now I'm obsessed with them I've been styling them I pull them from Screamy Mimi's all the time I own my own different kinds of petticoats and things and it's just really cool to see like the cycle of trends and how that was an up-and-coming moment she styled them with like lingerie tops which was kind of like not really done before which was really cool and she talks about it it's just very evident the cyclical nature of fashion and somebody as iconic as Cindy Lauper and her having worked there and then worked with Laura and being really close with her. Just really cool history of the store and how its longevity has really made an impact and it's still relevant and still inspiring and, and doing what it has done for years and years. Clients range in Screaming Mimi is from like your everyday shopper to costume designers, fashion stylists, which I've pulled from Screaming Mimi is for a bunch of shoots. Um, they're like a go-to for me. Fashion editors, designers, etc. Like you name it, it's for everybody and gives everybody inspiration. I could honestly talk about the store's history for forever and ever. I really urge you to pop in and check it out even if it's not your kind of personal style. I just think it's such a cool experience. They have a men's section and a women's section but there's a lot of unisex pieces. The pricing, I mean obviously there's like real authentic vintage pieces and old vintage costumes that are very delicate. So there's like a big range in price. I think it's probably from like eight to ten dollars to like certainly in the hundreds. That's just the nature of vintage and going to a place where the archive is really thought out and developed and pieces are like fought for and searched for and hunted and curated. I mean, there are times when I pop in and it's purely just for inspiration and other times where I'm shopping. So definitely a range in price, but I think there are pieces you can find that are certainly affordable. I think when it comes to their accessories, like a go-to, like you go to Screaming Mimi's for accessories for me at least that's like huge i think that's a really affordable kind of like section of the store i think like decade based clothing if you're really fixated on the 70s you really want like a cool 70s collar dress shirt you know they have them if you're into the 50s and if you want an authentic 50s hat they have them really quick to showcase some of my favorite items that i've purchased there and how i've styled them my clown collars are really everything to me with such a forming moment in my personal style this clown collar has some fake blood it was part of my marie antoinette costume but I have added it into my everyday life a ton. I feel like they retail for like between $20 to $30, so not too crazy. Probably one of my favorite pieces I have of all time. I will have it forever and ever, and it's just so incredibly special to me. This skirt, which I actually styled it with, I also will have forever and ever. It's the coolest little skirt, kind of has this corsetting piece opens up in the front so it's like such a fun layerable piece I need to steam it you never know what you're gonna find there honestly they're obviously very popular over the holidays especially Halloween Burning Man etc people come in but I urge you to not look at it kind of like as a costume shop because that would definitely limit it I think it's certainly more than that like I said it's definitely pushed me to play into humor and theme with my outfits tap into different decades and silhouettes and not be so like bound by the current trends and what I'm seeing. I'm gonna wrap up and move on to the next store because I could talk about it forever but definitely one of my biggest recommendations when you're visiting in the city or if you've never been you live here definitely check it out. So the next few shops are kind of part of like what I'm calling the perfect shopping day in Brooklyn specifically. So these are all shops in Brooklyn, the next like six, I believe. And they're all kind of like within a walking distance of each other. I've done them in order of like where you should start first when you get off the L and then pop around, walk through, walk through McCarran Park. I've kind of planned it all out for you if you want to do this. I've taken so many people to vi when they're visiting me on this day. I've done it by myself. It's just a great run through, hit some good shops, see some good people, get some good food, and it's a great time. So here's the layout of all the stores that I'm including in my like perfect day in Brooklyn. Here they are, let's get into it. Okay, set the scene, we just got off the L, you get off at the Bedford Ave stop. We're in Williamsburg, you pop up the step, right when you get off is Mother of Junk. If you live in New York, you probably know about this place and have probably been in it. It is basically a huge warehouse slash garage of just anything and everything from vintage magazines, any sort of tchotchke that you could ever imagine, old furniture, there's like some accessories, a lot of glassware, a lot of dishware. Prices definitely do range, but you can find stuff for pretty cheap. A dream of mine that I haven't done yet, I want to buy a lot of their really gorgeous frames and fill them with some prints or even paintings of my own. Or there are a lot of paintings and needlepoint up when you walk up the stairs on the elevated kind of platform, that's all frames and artwork. So I definitely urge you to go up there and check out the pieces. If you are in the market for some new artwork, etc., the frames that they have there are so stunning and those can retail for it crazy outside definitely a cool DIY and a place to check out for things like that it's certainly a hunt certainly a search a lot of people have said it's just trash and junk 
hence the name so people avoid it but again if you're like me i love a good haunt love to just check it out it's like so close to this kind of route i've planned for you guys so it's like pop in there check it out turn the corner walk around we're super close we're going to start off at malin this store is primarily for vintage designer pieces that's when i found most when i popped in i've gone here a few times it is a family-owned shop her and her daughter nova started it it is a vintage boutique which features their vintage collections available to rent and purchase and it opened in 2007 when i worked with tyler at tyler mcgillivary we pulled a lot from malin and rented a lot of pieces to use as like samples and references etc a lot of designers do that and find inspiration from her archive um, I know Orson Iris does that so she has a really cool archive and she's very interested in collaborating working with people she works with like big luxury brands as well but also small designers which is really really cool she also has hand dyed by Malin which was a collection of silk shirts and blouses that she hand dyed I think it was originally an Etsy shop found pieces that were stained and whatever and kind of played that up hand dyed them added some playful colors and sold them majority of the pieces in her store i believe are women's wear but obviously i mean anybody could wear that i think they run more on the petite side is what i found when i was printing around the store i think often with vintage when you have a majority vintage archival pieces vintage runs smaller at least that's what i found a lot of times kind of having to size up with vintage items Malin is definitely more on the expensive side it obviously can be justified due to the nature of vintage i think definitely go for unique shoes i think her footwear collection is so insane definitely a lot of silky 90s 2000s dresses that are stunning a lot of like sex in the city-esque pieces it's a great place to pop in for inspo just like a beautiful clothing i mean the outerwear is stunning the vintage coats the vintage furs the vibes in the store are great malin is super awesome she's always down to chat she was super nice to me about filming around in here i always love to pop in a store and know that the people are good people so that was certainly the vibe in malin's shop okay so continuing on we're still in williamsburg the next stop you'd hit is awoke vintage awoke vintage has three locations technically four the williamsburg location has another location that just opened so it's like one but also kind of two stores and then there are two locations around the corner in greenpoint which i went to as well and are incorporated within this kind of route awoke vintage is a secondhand and vintage boutique they source all their pieces as well when i was in the store recently filming these clips i found a lot of pieces were sourced from italy which was really cool what i love there is i find that they usually have like a 35 and under rack they usually have a sale rack Right now at most of the stores, it was a denim rack. They have great, great denim. I recommend if you're in the market for like a new pair of Levi's, they always have some really good Levi's for like 40 bucks and under, I'd say. They also carry a lot of small brands within the store, um, particularly their accessories. They have Cuckoo Suzette clip. They have gold-plated necklaces by Good Things BK. So this is a great place to shop for like little gifts, um, new accessories, sunglasses. They sell the brand Spitfire, which I'm a big fan of. Those retail for, I think like 70 and under, maybe 80 and under. Mine, I think were like 65 a piece, which like for a good pair of sunglasses, I don't think it's too crazy compared to like a Ray-Ban or like a luxury brand pair of sunglasses they have really good boots i've seen like a lot of cowgirl boots at multiple locations i think my favorite is like the og location in williamsburg had some really 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 great outerwear like stunning they have candles scarves boots graphic tees i think again it's majority for women but i think a lot of the graphic tees jackets etc could be for men and then obviously anybody can wear whatever they want just for your knowledge and i think the price range is pretty solid at a woe goes anything from like eight bucks probably from like the rings and the accessories to like it's two to three hundred but like nothing really more than that at least i found i recently bought this pair of jeans when i popped in and i literally Cannot wait to wear them. And then my new green jacket. Here's how I styled it. It's my new go-to jacket. So overall, I would say go to Woke Vintage for good denim. Any of those kitschy kind of accessories. Cool cowgirl boots if you're in the market for that. And then outerwear. That's at least new for me. Originally going to Woke, I never thought of it as like a good place for outerwear. But recently... Their stock was insane for outerwear. Like I loved every jacket I touched. Also size range, I mean, everything is pretty much one of a kind. I think they have a few pieces that they've bought in like bulk. I feel like they have a pretty good size range. I feel like I could definitely see a bit more plus size items I found. And their jeans, their size range is awesome. These are my two pairs of Spitfire sunglasses. These ones remind me of Iron Man. I don't know why I call them my Iron Man sunglasses. And then these ones, I like. They're just classic. They're not too like dark. I feel like I can wear them whenever if it's overcast. I love Spitfire Sunnies and they come with a case when you buy them, which is always nice. Okay, next on your Brooklyn journey, we're still in Williamsburg. You walk about like seven to nine minutes to 10 feet single by Stella Dallas, which is right next door to Stella Dallas Living. You're gonna go into both because 
that's a key misconception. I feel like people here, 10 Feet Single by Stella Dallas is Bella Hadid's favorite store. You just go to 10 Feet Single. Do not sleep on Stella Dallas Living. That is probably my second favorite store, I would say. Don't own anything from there. That is purely a place that I just go in and like gawk at, specifically the dresses. But I will get into that. Let's start with 10 Feet Single. 10 Feet Single sells both vintage and contemporary clothing and accessories, both for men and women. It is known as one of Bella Hadid's faves. It is very organized. I find it very shoppable. Going there more and more, I feel like I kind of find my favorite spots around the store where I know they're gonna put the stuff that I love. Um, um, which I really like. There's not as much vintage designer pieces, which is cool. So I feel like you can find vintage for an affordable price. Chan Beat Single always has some poochie. It's in the back right corner when you like first walk into the store. I feel like they come across a lot of like dead stock um, piles. So right now they have like a 1970s shirt rack where there's a bunch of shirts in different sizes, color ranges that are all from the 70s. And I feel like they're priced at like 35 to 40, which was pretty solid. A lot of stuff in bulk, but then they have a lot of like one off really unique pieces as well. You'll look up and around the store they have a lot of graphic tees and cool varsity jackets really unique probably the more expensive stuff is hung um, on the ceiling around I never really look at the graphic tees I know in New York City those are super like those prices are insane like a graphic band tee forget it that is out of my price range I feel like I can find those elsewhere so I kind of stray away from those they have really cool authentic 1920s to 1960s sequin pieces, sequin boleros, tops, dresses that are really, really cool. I find my favorite area is in the back of the store. So like definitely go to the back of the store, vintage preppy letterman jackets and cardigans. Towards the front of the store, they have a lot of slip dresses that are a bit more basic shape, kind of like uniform slips. I like slips with like a bit more of a unique shape cap sleeve playful with that rather than just like the tank v-neck kind of slip but those are gorgeous too really good layering pieces and they're really affordable on that rack so definitely check that out but in the back they have really cool vintage corsets and bloomers etc but stella dallas living the store right next door to 10 feet single is going to be the place you go to for the perfect vintage slip the perfect bonnet the perfect bloomer petticoat and i will talk about that in a second that is like my victorian era spot sticking to the point 10 feet single go to 10 feet single for 70s flare jeans they have an unreal selection of those a lot of like utility menswear military menswear a lot of sweaters cable knit sweaters cardigans really cool belts this is all kind of in the back of the store sick belt buckles they have really cool kilts skirts old vintage sweatshirts that are kind of like that perfect nitty gritty worn in sweatshirt i found this really cool dead stock top that was in the back right area kind of by Gucci sequin pieces i think it retailed for like 40 dollars which is like you know kind of pricey for like a t-shirt but for me i really loved it i thought it was super unique so i justified it but everybody has their own their own way of justifying certain things also my bloomers i got there i got this seafoam green pair and i also got a chocolate brown pair i saw the chocolate brown pair with that top i just showed you guys actually in this little number actually with tights that i also bought at 10 feet single these retail for i think about like 20 bucks this was before kind of like the boom of bloomers um so maybe they would jack up the prices a little bit more because they know they're in high demand but who knows they didn't have any bloomers in store that i found at the moment but again it's winter outerwear was major some sick sick fur coats they have a lot a lot of converse some good sweaters like i found this sweater this retailed for like 30 bucks i would say particularly here the like denim at least definitely runs smaller it is like true vintage flare can't so they don't have as much stretch as like our jeans would now and 2022 so take that into account of course they have a lot of berets bandanas that are affordably priced overall i feel like 10 feet single does run a bit more expensive but i think for good reason i think their collection of vintage with a range of contemporary designs that are definitely marked down i think you can certainly find something with your price range and i think you can always find a piece that lasts a lifetime so i think it's definitely worth a visit next we have stella dallas living this place is so stunning vintage blankets tablecloths dollies the most stunning collection of vintage dresses there are definitely some affordable pieces here. I find that I just like fall in love with the most expensive things, unfortunately. Um, so I definitely go there to look around rather than shop. But like to me, that's just as fun sometimes. I think it definitely runs more on the on the woman's wear end. I think go here for like the perfect vintage dress. 
I'm not gonna lie. Like it has one of the best collections of vintage dresses, slip dresses that I've ever seen. I also really quickly wanna shout out Evelina Vintage, um, who I've been obsessed with. This is their Instagram. I think they have an online store and they do like pop-ups. I don't think they have like a brick and mortar, but they also have an unreal collection of vintage dresses. Just wanna say that really quick. Back to Stella Dallas Living. Also go here for bloomers, bonnets, petticoats. There's a whole display in the front of the register with like gorgeous trinkets and vintage items. Really cool vintage ribbon in the back and fabric. The people that work there are always the nicest. I'm always telling them that their collection is like literally to die for. Um, I couldn't find much information on the owners, etc., but they're always so great and so nice in there. I would say Stella Dallas Living runs on the more expensive side, but for a very good reason. Definitely worth a visit in there, for sure. And then within this day's journey, you have an 18 minute walk through McCarran Park or like a 10 minute subway, I think on the G train, it's like one stop. I always do the walk, McCarran Park, Super Gorge, vibes are always good. If it's a nice day, people are always out in the park, running the track, out with dogs, out with their family. On this walk, you can stop, get a coffee, get some lunch, there are a bunch of places around. But once you get to this area, we're in Greenpoint now in Brooklyn. I'm not sure what exactly this flea market is called. I think it's 18 Bedford Ave Market. This is my second honorable mention. This place is awesome. A bunch of independent vendors sell here. I know some of my friends have sold here before. They just essentially set up right in front of Forma Pasta Factory and Awoke Vintage, which is right there. You can talk prices. I remember I bought this skirt there. So yeah, super fun and unique pieces. In this area, there's another Awoke Vintage. I like this Awoke Vintage location. I think it's about a similar size, if not a little bit smaller than the main one in Williamsburg. But again, great denim, great selection here. They have a really good collection in here of Spitfire. That's where I bought my two sunglasses. But the next store I want to talk about is Tired Thrift. Tired Thrift is a couple stores down from that Awoke Vintage in Greenpoint, right by where that market is as well. Tired Thrift opened at their physical location November of 2020. They are opening a new location in Manhattan, which I'm so excited for, I think in January. I love the two owners. It's Letty and Alona. They are cousins. They're super amazing girls. They have such an unreal eye for curating their shop. Their story in leading up to creating Tired Thrift is that they both came from driven immigrant parents and grew up kind of wanting to create something of their own. They both had a passion for secondhand. So Tired Thrift started as like a passion project and turned into something real. Their aim is to essentially make sustainable shopping easy for vintage lovers and those who want to work on their kind of shopping ethics and habits and get into thrifting, etc. I love their kind of take on the trend cycle where like obviously trends repeat themselves and resurface their kind of method of like pulling the trend and filling their store with these kind of trendy items from the source so like from the decade where they really like blossomed from. So like selling like authentic 90s pieces because like the 90s are super trendy right now rather than buying the fast fashion version of that trend, if that makes sense. Another aspect of Tired Thrift that I adore is something that I think they started kind of as a response to the pandemic. Obviously during the pandemic, people weren't coming in physically to shop. So it kind of urged them to do something online to show the clothing pieces on and have people DM to purchase. But it's their tryouts, which essentially they post on their stories on their Instagram, which I'll link below. I'll link every store I talk about, Instagram or website. They try on new pieces, pieces that they have in the store. I think it's like a brilliant, brilliant way to sell their pieces. And I love, love, love seeing clothing pieces on. I think that's super important for me. They do a bunch of events, like a custom airbrush event. I think the price range is probably from like 20 to 30 to like, 90 and in the hundreds but again they have some really cool authentic vintage pieces like obviously outerwear is going to be more expensive vintage furs are going to be more expensive so they have a lot of that but they also have a lot of basics mini skirts cool long skirts they have really sick unique pants bottoms are always hard for me but they have dope bottoms some really cool heels the vibes are like very much 90s y2k depop kind of like in real life energy disney nostalgia for sure most of the pieces are women's wear but again anybody can wear them they have really really great like 90s 90s dresses, silky, asymmetrical, really, really cute dresses, good for like weddings, parties, etc. Really, really cool. I was talking to Anya who's working there when I popped in and she so kindly showed me her favorite picks around the store. Those are insane. Love. Are they like bell bottom? I think they're just straight leg. Just straight leg. But like, so good. Come on. Love the pink ones too. The pink ones? Those are insane. No, literally, I really like everything that's like shirts. <laughs> Those would like flatter like anybody's legs. No, literally. Like the long stripe. Silky, like, those are so good. I love I those too. Really like oh my god, cute. I didn't even see those. These ones are really cute. I love those. In the back. Yeah. Are really That's really cute. And then for top. Yeah. Oh, this I tried on today. But I really like this. Is that? 
<gasps> oh, that's so good. Fully mesh. Yeah. Stop. Oh, that's really, really cool. So many plaid. Yeah. No, it's insane. So that section right plaid. there. Like, it's like the perfect. Any of these. Any of those. Like, come on. So good. This one, like, I wish it fit my arms a little bit better. Oh, get out. That's Diesel. Damn. It's killing me. Yeah, it, it, it really is one of the essentially. Essentially, it's killing me. She's not okay. This is like. So good. One of my favorite jackets. Yeah, I'm obsessed. Yeah, your jacket selection's insane right now. No, it's killing me. Size range, obviously a lot of the stuff is one of a kind, but I think they definitely source with all sizes kind of in mind. They're always active on their stories, but like new stuff coming in. Last two honorable mentions after this little day, we end at Tired Thrift. Then you pop around the corner, pop into Dream Fish and Tackle. It has like fishing paraphernalia. It's a collection of vinyl and like music there in the back. But then the whole rest of the store is like mid-century, modern art deco very like vintage miami furniture and it's like the coolest craziest most unique pieces they have a dope instagram where they post all the new pieces they just got in obviously this stuff retails for quite expensive but a great opportunity to find like a unique piece you've been searching for or just get some inspo <laughs> whether you need a break in between shopping or after. I would recommend hitting Twins Lounge. I love this place, I love the vibe. They have a really great ambiance. There's a pool in the back, they have a photo booth, which is dope. Keep in mind this place is cash only, but the drinks are delicious. I love their house spritz, super good. Get yourself a little booth, hang out, recap, refresh, and then carry on your day. So that wraps up my kind of day in Brooklyn. I love Greenpoint, I also love Williamsburg, so you get a little bit of both, and then a good walk to the park. It's a good BK day, that's all I'm gonna say. Next Next up, we have Fine and Dandy. It was created in 2008, but their first physical store was created in 2012, so they just celebrated their 10 year anniversary. Fine and Dandy is located in Hell's Kitchen and it's run by Matt and Enrique, who are a couple and a dynamic duo. Two of the best people I know. Again, kind of two stores right next to each other. Matt works in house at Fine and Dandy, which is kind of the haberdashery, men's accessories, more preppy, dapper, menswear area. Really fun, cool trinkets from different decades. Really cool cup links, spats is where I discovered spats. Their ties and bow ties, hankies, suspenders, which are all produced by them. The trepper hats are like my personal fave. Anything preppy and dapper accessories. I always feel like when I walk into that store, I learn something new. Matt always has like a really cool story on something. Both places are technically menswear, but again, those categories don't really exist. Anybody can wear whatever. So yeah, Matt's kind of on one side and then Enrique's on the other. He runs the showroom, which is fine and dandy throwback, which is definitely a bit more streetwear, more graphic tees, more 80s, 90s, 2000s, really, really sick collection of pieces, outerwear, it's a really cool vintage brands you've forgotten about or don't know the backstory to. Again, always learn something from Enrique, greatest vibes in there. Always down to chat or look out for pieces for you. I filmed with them, kind of asked them their favorite picks and talked to them about kind of like their store, their history. So a few of my favorite things, um, my favorite tie of the season is this um, very lightweight wool paisley tie. Um, I love these, these, um, these lightweight wools because they tie well, but um, they still have that kind of chunky autumnal kind of feel. We do these patchwork tweed scarves, which we, we produce in Donegal, Ireland. So it's it's patchwork tweed on one side and then corduroy on the other. Oh, cool. Which I think is just so great. And yeah. It's a little bit on the thicker side, so we make we don't make them too long. So, but it's a good length that you can kind of just like, you know, fold into a blazer or right. into your, your winter coat. Lastly, Pantherella, which is this um, amazing brand from the UK. They make the most amazing cashmere socks. And we always say that when a customer comes in and they say they're shopping for somebody who's impossible to shop for. <laughs> yeah. We always point them to cashmere socks because people don't generally shop, buy cashmere socks for themselves because right. it's kind of a luxury. You put on cashmere socks and you're literally the happiest person in the world. So true. And um, whenever I tell that to a customer, you know, 80% of the time they're like, that's perfect. <laughs> they, buy, they buy that person with their cashmere socks. Love. So I'll start with this guy. Yeah. This is the Riviera Italia Polo. I recently got the shorts to match with, which oh. I didn't know 
<laughs> about. And so um, what's funny is like all the guys collect this now, mm -hmm. like, uh, collect Ralph Lauren, even though it's like originally made, you know, for women, the, the sizing and um, the buttons. I had this for like, I don't know, since I was like 20s, I guess. Wow. Like 24 years. Um, so yeah, I'm, you know, when somebody wants me to uh, sell it, I do, you know, I can sell it for totally. the right price. Um, yeah. You know, they don't turn up too easy. Second like one, um, so this, each letter stands for something. So it's actually Nike, N-I-K-E. So not a lot of people actually know that, but the Nike, Nike did a boating line only for one year. Uh -huh. like 1987 um, America's Cup down in Australia. Yeah. Um, and so, and then they scrapped it. But this is one um, of the, I think there's like eight, nine, maybe different pieces, categories, right? But I thought this was so cool. Like somebody should, you know, brands should like totally just reference that pattern. Because yeah. It's, you know, it's got the long bill, it's got the strap. Obsessed. Like this, like, it's just so sporty, but it could be also, you know, done formal. Totally. Like, Super chic, and I love it. It's like a subtle, like N I K E. Like, you know, it's not, yeah, it, people kind of pass over. Now they know what it is. Crazy. Uh, I've also seen it uh, in red. There's also a red uh, uh, I love. jacket is MTV. So, what's really um, weird is that, you know, you think MTV, like bright colors, like poppy color, but this right. is actually like one, I think the first year that they were around. Right. So, they didn't have a brand identity yet, right? And I actually kind of like the red and gray um, color combo. So what we've learned is um, there were only 20 made. Wow. I saw another listing for a you know, dealer in LA. And then another one, Auction House. And that's where I learned that you know, only 20 were made. Some, somebody that worked on MTV, wow. 20 were made and it sold. But what's even cooler is um, this jacket came from Matt's uncle. No way! He said it's okay to sell it. I really actually like it, so not in any hurry. But no, I think it's really cool what's happening with thrift. Yeah, you know, I agree. Um, when I was growing up, um, so I'm 44, right? You get to my age and you kind of see cyclical trends and like totally. fashion. And you know, it'll come back a little differently, but I see patterns, especially being in New York, it's like the best runway. You kind of, and like you said, you're, I'm also very visual. When I was young, like, parents would tell me like you know they were so annoyed I would look out the window and you know driving car and like read every sign and, <laughs> <laughs> you know and so observant and everything and like just like head out the window um, so I've never changed so I kind of know when things are kind of interesting to me and mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm curious about it if I don't know about it then actually what's I'll just take it home and then somebody or a customer will actually tell me about it which is a lot of the knowledge that I got especially for like boy scouts or fraternities like, right it was just so fascinated by, by this American school system because mm -hmm. I'm Canadian. Yeah. Like how to, and then, you know, they'll tell me certain, you know, uh, traditions or whatnot or scandals. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You have to do a t shirt. I love the paintbrush, hand painted, and like weird. Look, look closely, like all those little faces, like all wow. different. Do you know what this so, is? Oh, no. I think mean, it's a signature. Maybe they're bad. I know the little bit, you know, right? Beetle. I love so it. So fun. And I don't even know, like, is it the movie? Like, was it Godzilla or right. King Kong at that? I don't know, like at that time. You know, it's the older BVDs yeah. so you have the single stitch. So I picked this up at the Rose Bowl, like last mm. January. My very first Rose Bowl. Love. So it was really cool. Matt and a couple of friends went to Palm Springs instead of like Mexico. And so, so I fun. won a Rose Bowl and I've been talking to one of my um, friends in vintage is like yeah i'll take you and i'm like totally i mean and it was like first time meeting after like two years right Corresponding. So, so i wanted to pick something that's like you know like got me through the lockdown and you know to, to meet them in person and then Love. now have a shop and that's like it's like crazy yeah um, no that's so. beautiful i bought a bunch of things particularly from throwback but i want to talk about these abercrombie pants um because first of all this tag is so major and nostalgic and the fit of these pants let me tell you something i they're probably some of my favorite pants that i own i'll put up my outfit i also bought the top i'm wearing in this from fine and dandy throwback i'm just obsessed you find the coolest coolest pieces um enrique is always down to source things for you pricing there is always super reasonable i find i mean obviously for the pieces that they create and source from like authentic fabric in ireland and have it mailed to them and 
created by hand pieces like that certainly going to be more expensive um, but certainly worth it and like the best of the best of quality all the t-shirts are super great something you can always talk to Enrique about I mean they're super flexible super great and reasonable people on price and stuff they so clearly love what they do and the the space that they created so I highly highly recommend it for literally anybody and everybody to check it out and pop in next up we have James Valoria it is located in Chinatown within sort of a mall which I want to mention just enter these doors so Colin James and Brandon Valoria started James Valoria as an online retailer in 2014 but opened up as a brick and mortar in 2017 they sell special vintage and contemporary pre-owned clothing and accessories with an emphasis on Japanese and European designers I just think beyond their collection and clothing that they sell their shopping experience is super cool the decor the ambiance their aesthetic that they've kind of created and, and really adapted is so fun and so cool it's just a great store to be in and, and cool people to be around I think majority of the store is vintage designer they have men's women's unisex you name it they've got it I think the past couple of times I've popped in they have a really amazing Vivian Westwood selection which is awesome um, I find everything is very good quality uh, and they are quite reasonable with prices nothing too insane I personally really like the sunglasses it's an awesome store next shop we have Rogue created by Emma Rogue it is located around like Nolita kind of below the East Village Rogue right now sells like 90s 2000 vintage and secondhand pieces I would say Rogue is like certainly for that 90s 2000s Depop person they sell men's women's I was talking to Emma and Haley who was working there and they were kind of saying like you know it's it's for that Depop person but also that kind of like archival fashion person they have a really dope designer rack small business rack right now so they also have rogue originals original screen printed items that they sell online but also in store they are constantly doing closet sales art exchanges constantly doing pop-ups and working with different creators they're currently working on expanding right now which is also super exciting emma who's an absolute boss showed me her favorite pieces that they have at the store at the moment which is really dope it's emma we are here at rogue i'm going to show you a few of my favorite pieces in the shop right now this is our designer Iraq, so you know I <laughs> this I is it, it. <laughs> Okay, so this piece, okay, this is a really cute Dolce Gabbana halter top. Dead. Um, Lily Rose Depp actually wore this in that new show she's in. Oh, with stop. The weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had the matching set. I haven't found the pants, but it's super flattering on. Yeah, <laughs> insert the page. Okay, I, will. I also really love this top. This is oh, Raph that's Simmons. crazy. Um, what is it? Raph Simmons, Spring Summer 2021. It just reminds me of like Willy Wonka. Or, yeah. Like, Anything Roald Dahl inspired. Love. This Gautier bag, my brother actually sourced this one. Shout out Noah. Damn. It has the dragon. I used to have the crossbody one, but I love this. And then That's so cool. Parasuko is another vintage brand I've been loving lately. They make really cool jeans, really nice denim. Haley actually sourced this one. Really nice like velour zip up. So sick. And it kind of reminds me of like the Great China Wall. That was another brand from early 2000s, like Jessica Simpson wore it. So this one's really cool too. Love. So yeah, definitely a fun place to check out and a place to kind of like keep up to date with especially on like the pop-ups and the closet sales and things like that. Um, they work with a bunch of different creators and people around the city or outside. Um, so it's really fun, always something going on there. Emma's always doing something, so booked and busy. Super cool stuff, so definitely, definitely check out Rogue. Then we have Funny Pretty Nice. They have two locations that kind of like sandwich Washington Square Park. The first one I went to I think is like the OG Funny Pretty Nice. And when I popped in, my friend Maddie was working. So that was a sleigh. I asked Maddie to show me like her pics as well. I think Natalia who created it has such an amazing eye for you know what's up and coming not even just what's trending right now I think a lot of people go for their outerwear so like the leather jackets the moto like those have been super super popular Matilda Jerk just got one from Funny Pretty Nice icons like Devin and Sydney Carlson were at the shop Addison Ray, Olivia Rodrigo it's an girl moment for sure they also do closet sales and pop-ups all the time I went to the Mimi Moons um, event that they were having Mimi Moons is also a sick brand to check out but they're always doing something they did a Fraser Sterling event the other night. I love a color-coded store as well. Funny Pretty Nice also has its own label, which is really cool. I think it's like majority sets, so like tanks and skirts and pants are really cool. I think all the prints were made by them. I think majority of the store is women's, but again, anybody can shop there. They just put out a bunch of like rave wear and like dead stock rave pieces, which were so cool. A lot of tank tops. There are like basics and pieces for people that are a bit more like minimalist, but also, you know, really fun, crazy pieces for like a maximalist moment. Anybody can really find something there, I think. Um, and they appeal to like a lot of different styles and things like that. I bought this little like ombre skirt. I'll put a picture of me wearing it because like you can't really see how it flows on the hanger, but it's literally, I think it's got to be one of my favorite skirts of all time. And then their second 
second location I think they opened in like June I believe it was my first time popping in there it was also so cute so well curated cutest fur jacket so definitely really fun places to pop in um, and now they have two locations which is fabulous okay then we have second street I definitely feel like second street is known for like their secondhand designer pieces when you walk into this certain location there's like a glass display of the wallets the sunglasses etc with all the prices very kind of spelled out they have locations all around Manhattan but I really like the NoHo one in particular second street is also for everybody which is nice and they have great shoes as well like great heels but also like random boots it's all also great for like hype beast streetwear there's a bunch of like sneakers if they don't just sell designer they have a bunch of like graphic tees that are really cool um that they kind of like curate still fits the store's vibe without being like a crazy label or anything like that one of my favorite purchases that i got at second street were these emilio pucci moon boots i think they were like 60 bucks which had me so rattled i was shocked that they were that cheap i feel like they are very affordable designer pieces there and then also vintage designer but it's not always vintage but yeah they're good bags too really good accessories i found my vivian westwood little cap there as well i think that was like 40 bucks or something i found another one of my favorite pieces like of all time at second street at the same location it's this skirt that i wear like a bunch this i think was about a hundred but again bottoms i have such a hard time finding like cool bottoms especially bottoms that like fit this silhouette is crazy like i would just die for more skirts in this shape this noho one's located right by washington square park having a little park day it's a cool place to pop in sometimes there's a line outside which is like kind of not a vibe but i feel like every time i've like really wanted to go in i haven't had to wait in a line this noho one's also right by a buffalo exchange certainly not the best buffalo exchange i've ever been in but I have found a couple things there. So another place to pop in, especially if there's a long line at Second Street. Okay, we have a couple L trains in the mix here because I felt like it was was only right to include a couple. Um, I'll put like a picture here of all the L train vintage locations. If you live in New York, if you've visited, if you searched up like where to shop, I'm sure an L train has popped up. Mixed feelings, like sometimes they're a win, sometimes they're like an absolute no. But I popped in to No Relation and Urban Jungle and I will say they did have an amazing selection and the prices were kind of good. I know people have been complaining about like the upcharge on certain things, but like I was still finding like skirts and pants at Urban Jungle for like eight bucks, denim for $10, like vests for like 15, still like pretty inexpensive for like what you would think a curated whatever thrift store would be in New York. Urban Jungle could eat No Relation Vintage. It is fucking huge. Um, I'm not sure when exactly they added the like back part of that store. It was after I moved here because that was not there when I first started going to Urban Jungle and stuff like that. But let's start with No Relation first off. No Relation is in Manhattan. It's on the east side right by Tompkins Square Park. It is, you know, part of an L train vintage. So it is like in the name of vintage store. I would say, I mean, there's definitely like vintage items there, but I think it also lends to kind of like a thrift store vibe where, you know, it's like Adidas zip up, classic like plain white t-shirts or like white t-shirts with a little bit of a graphic. You definitely get that at No Relation. And although it's a little bit maybe more upcharged than like a $5 t-shirt, it's somewhere around like 10 and 11 still. So it's not crazy. I was finding a lot of those like Adidas zip up things like that. And those were like $12. And you guys know those are pretty trendy right now. So like they're not upcharging those crazy huge denim jackets selection i will say at no relation they had an amazing leather jacket selection a lot better than urban jungle so like if you're looking for a leather jacket i would go to no relation before i would go to urban jungle for that they had really great fur coats real fur but it's second hand definitely like a sportswear windbreaker letterman kind of spot i'd say like the price range isn't too bad at no relation like it's pretty solid pieces i mean it's obviously a new york city vintage store um so like they are gonna upcharge you more than your local home thrift store like a salvation army or savers and stuff but like not too bad the size range i found was pretty solid at no relation as well and then urban jungle which is also an l train vintage is in williamsburg i wanted to pick a manhattan one and then i wanted to pick a brooklyn one urban jungle i think was like one of the first stores i went to when i moved to new york so i've gone through waves of it being like no it's overpriced it's like too much of a hunt i never really find anything there to being like oh no like i found my winter coat there i found a really good pair of jeans track pants like whatever so definitely hit or miss for me but i did find my classic like winter coat my cheetah coat that's from urban jungle but yeah so urban jungle is 
massive i tried to film it in the best way i could so you could like visualize how exactly big it is it also has another location right next to it um that is like a, a more curated bit more expensive version of urban jungle Ball, i would say so like it's definitely like more brand names like a tommy ho figure harley davidson ed hardy like those kind of brands i found the harley davidson jacket that i'm trying on in this clip um at the more curated section it was 50 dollars um which i was like oh i don't want to pay but like i the jacket was so unique and I loved the way it fit and everything. So I did get it. And then I found these Nike shocks that were $20 at Urban Jungle, the bigger location. Urban Jungle, similar to No Relation, had a ton of like utility workwear or somebody that's just kind of getting into thrifting or buying secondhand. I think L trains are a really good spot to try. So it's not like so curated to like one kind of style. Um, Urban Jungle can definitely be a hunt just because it is so big. Down to the floor for a jacket and they had them for pretty solid prices at Urban Jungle, I will say. They also have some really cool blankets similar to Stella Dallas. I would say like avoid going for maybe like bags. They've never really had the best selection of bags in my opinion but yeah overall price range i would say pretty damn good can find some pretty good good deal those are all the stores i'm mentioning in this video for now i will obviously keep updating these guides as i go i'd love to do kind of like more themed guides like this um like i said i wanted to do like a flea market guide like this i want to say a huge thank you to everybody that agreed to be in this video and let me film their stores um i seriously appreciate it so much and i adore every spot i popped into i hope you guys i found a spot you want to pop into or learn something new or just enjoy this video all in all that's that's just my hope so yeah definitely look out for more videos like this in the future if you have any recommendations on like certain guides you want me to do or things you want me to talk about comment down below let me know or dm me on instagram here's my instagram i'm gonna wrap this up because i'm sure this video is so long but if you stay till the end thank you for watching i adore you and i will see you next week bye everybody